Arctic Monkeys are known for following the ethos of their debut album, Whatever People Say They Are, that's what they're not. Sure, their first two albums may not be incredibly different from a musical standpoint, but nonetheless, each record has marked a new sonic era for the 21st century kings of UK alt-rock. Their third record, Humbug, explored desert rock and psychedelia. Their fifth album, the big international breakthrough AM, went into the sonic world of late 90s and early 2000s hip-hop. Their most recent record, Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino, was a band embracing jazz and surrealist lyrics about a man living on the moon. Interstellar Arctic Monkey. Imagine the monkey. Now, in honor of album 7, The Car, coming out in October of this year, I thought that it would be the perfect time to examine the one LP that I intentionally skipped, as I'm about to do a whole video defending why the dark horse of Arctic Monkeys albums isn't just their most underrated, but one of their best. With that introduction out of the way, we can now examine what we Americans consider to be an incredibly vulgar album. It is time to suck it and see. Following the polarizing sonic shift the Monkees made with 2009's Humbug, there was really no telling where they'd go next. With that LP, they noticeably slowed down the tempo and dialed back the chaotic energy they emphatically exuded on their first two LPs. Would they double down on Humbug, go back to the poppier and catchier sound of their first two albums, or explore a new sound altogether? Different interviews gave off different impressions, making it hard to really pin down what the band was going to sound like on the upcoming album. However, after the fact, there was this one interview where I think Alex does a great job of explaining what exactly Suck It and See sounds like. A lot of your fans see this new album as a kind of return to form to the early sound of the band. Not really, I think it, it don't think it sounds like the first one at, at all really. I think mean, it's kind of quite removed from that, but. I guess there's there's a bit more of a sense of humour in the lyrics on this one than, than there was on the previous one. Yeah, but the sound of it overall, I think, is quite different to you know any of the other records. It's true, Suckin' and See does have a plethora of nice melodies, but to claim it's loud, high energy, or very poppy for that matter, in the realm of their first two albums, is a complete farce. In fact, it's even less energetic than Humbug. Sure, songs like Library Pictures, Brick by Brick, and Don't Sit Down Cause I've Moved Your Chair have menace, but the core foundation of this LP is mellow and acoustic. That could be the result of Mr. Alex Turner having just completed the soundtrack for the somewhat depressing film, Submarine, and in turn being inspired by the melancholy that that film explored. Suck It and See is not a perfect album. That's okay, mistakes build character. Brick by Brick is not a great song. We know that. I am not anti-Matt Helders. I love the man. It's just repetitive lyrically and musically stagnant. Black Treacle is also a bit underwhelming in my humble opinion, especially compared to the other 10 tracks, which I would say are all varying degrees of fantastic. There are two things that make Suck It and See a uniquely great Arctic Monkeys album. One, Mr. Alex Turner has really upped his game as a lyrical love wizard. Songs like <sighs> She's Thunderstorms, The Hellcat Spangled Sha La La La, Reckless Serenade, Pile Driver Waltz, Love is a Laser Quest, the title track, and That's Where You're Wrong are all peak poetry. What also distinguishes Suck It from the vast majority of their current discography is that it was almost entirely recorded live. This made the band sound more authentic and intimate, almost like they were just playing in the garage next door, except the band that's playing is the fucking Arctic Monkeys. This method of recording, with minimal studio trickery, allows the listener to very clearly understand just how good all four musicians in the band are. Suck It and See is Sublime, the perfect album to soundtrack a long drive in your car with the windows down on a hot summer's day. Perhaps this image pops into my head because many of the music videos from this era provided that visual canvas, but that's besides the point, okay? Everyone who hasn't already, should also make sure to check out the album's b-sides, in particular the Blondo Sonic Shimmer Trap and Evil Twin, to get a better idea of the recording sessions and to hear the louder rocking punch that most of the album lacks. If nothing else, I hope this video encourages a friendly and enthusiastic conversation in the comments for this commonly overlooked record. I know I'm not the only one who thinks this is a hidden classic, but it's also inevitable that some people will think it's their worst record. The beauty of opinion. The beauty of life.